Despite the name, heuristic evaluations are not as complex as they sound. Heuristic evaluation is a method for finding usability flaws in user interface design. When we use heuristic evaluation, we evaluate the user interface according to the known usability principles. In today's video, we will discuss how to use this method in product design and review 10 popular heuristics that apply to almost all user interfaces. Let's start with understanding what usability really is. Usability is the user's ability to use a product. Usability is just one of the characteristics of the user experience. If you think about the user's needs holistically, we can visualize them in a the form of a pyramid. The utility is a foundation of the user's needs. When people evaluate a product, they first consider whether the product satisfies their needs. When choosing a product, people ask questions. Does it solve my problem? Next comes reliability. The product should consistently perform well for your users. Users should not face any unexpected crashes or glitches when interacting with the product. Any unexpected problems that users face as they interact with your product will make them doubt whether they can rely on it in the long term. Next comes usability. User's ability to use a product. It's not enough for a product to be reliable. It also should be usable. When we try to improve usability, we aim to find and remove any barriers that prevent an efficient human-computer interaction. Finally, pleasurability. Pleasurability refers to any positive emotional response that users receive from interacting with the product. When we conduct heuristic evaluation, we aim to identify usability flaws so that the team can design an easy-to-use product. The word heuristic means a rule of thumb. A heuristic is a very general rule or principle that applies to a wide range of user interfaces. When we talk about heuristic evaluation, we mean using a list of heuristics to check if the products satisfy them. Here is how to perform a heuristic evaluation. First, you need to define a scope. Doing a heuristic evaluation of an entire product isn't a good idea, especially when working on a large-scale product. Heuristic evaluation of the entire product could take a long time and become very expensive. That's why it's recommended to conduct a highly focused heuristic evaluation. Focus only on the most critical areas of the product. Next, you need to invite usability experts. Usability experts are professionals who can evaluate your user interface and accurately judge what will irritate users. Usability experts don't need to be users of your product. Ideally, you should invite three experts who can define the evaluation criteria and assess your products against it. If you invite more than three experts, you will likely see a sharp reduction in evaluation results. Heuristic evaluations rely heavily on the heuristics that are defined on each or choosing. Together with experts, you need to choose heuristics that you will use to evaluate your product. Experts should know exactly what they are supposed to do during the evaluation. So it's recommended to hold a briefing session during which you will ensure that experts receive the, most, the same instruction. Most experts use between 5 to 10 heuristics when they do evaluation. The heuristics should be chosen based on the, the relevance to the product that is being tested. A rating system will help you prioritize the list of usability issues found by the experts. Next, do the evaluation. Ensure that all experts use the same set of heuristics and do assessments independently. It will help you receive unbiased results. At the end of the heuristic evaluation, it's essential to aggregate the heuristic evaluation reports from usability experts and build a list of usability issues that needs to be fixed. Here is the first example of the heuristic evaluation report. It shows the scope 
compared to how many rules were found were followed for each heuristic. And here is another example of the heuristic evaluation report. It shows the severity of the issues and provides recommendations on how to solve them. Jacob Nielsen's 10 usability heuristic for user interface design and Ben Schneiderman 8 golden rules of interface design are probably the most commonly used set of usability heuristics. In this video I will cover Jacob Nielsen's 10 usability heuristics. The great thing about the set created by Jacob Nielsen is that it remains the same since the moment he defined it in 1994. And it's likely the heuristics will be relevant for the future types of the product. That's because heuristics come from the basic, uh, basic understanding of human psychology and the way people interact with the product. Let me walk you through each of the heuristics. The first heuristic is the visibility of a system status. The system should always keep the user informed about what's happening. When you design a product, you shouldn't make the user wonder what's happening or offer any sort of a feedback, visual, audio, or haptic to help the user understand the current status. It's particularly important to provide feedback on actions initiated by the user. In such case, the feedback acts as acknowledgement for the user. Users understand that the system received their request and working on it. Loading is one of the cases when you need to inform the users about the current status. Load time can vary drastically depending on the context and when users don't have any feedback, they simply don't have any information whether the system is doing something or not. Feedback alleviates any fears that the system is not responding. Much between system and the real world. The system should use language that is easy for your users to understand. It means that the terminology, as well as the concept and metaphors used in the digital products, should be natural to your users. It's essential to identify all places in your app that can cause confusion and redesign them to make them evident for your target audience. Confusion can be caused by unfamiliar terms or unfamiliar concepts. To beat the first problem, you need to avoid jargon and use terms that are familiar to your target audience. To overcome the second problem, you need to rely on analogies from the real world. Here is a nice example of design that follows this rule. Mercedes uses a metaphor of physical chair for their power seats adjustment controls. It helps passengers to understand how to adjust the seat according to their needs. Third, user control and freedom. The system should offer an emergency exit because people make mistakes when they interact with the product. Users should be able to undo and redo actions. When the users send a message using a Gmail, the service offers a confirmation dialog with the undo button. The undo button allows users to cancel the sending if the message was sent by accident. Consistency and standards. Users shouldn't have to worry whether the different words, situation or actions mean the same thing. Designers should strive for a consistent design. They have to offer internal consistency, consistency of individual design decisions in the product, and external consistency, consistency with the platform standards. The location and design of navigation menu in Apple Mac OS is consistent. Both the order of the navigation options and their visual appearance is the same in different apps. Error prevention. Errors should be kept to a minimum. Prevent errors from happening by designing for situation where users might face problems. You need to design your products to minimize the total number of cases when users can face problems and will need support and assistance. For example, when user provides input, you can use inline validation to validate the data on the fly, so the user doesn't need to tap the submit button. Recognition rather than recall. Humans can recognize things much more easily than recalling them from scratch. 
Product designers should minimize the user's memory load by making objects, actions and op other options visible and clearly communicated. Don't make users think. Provide all required suggestions at the moment when users need them. Contextual recommendations in Google Search is an excellent example of recognition rather than recall. As the user starts typing, Google Search suggests the relevant queries, and this helps users find the right query in less time. Flexibility and efficiency of use. Accommodate both novice and advanced users, but tailor the experience for both groups. Provide ways of speeding up workflows and accelerating users familiar with the system, while guiding those who are less familiar. For example, you can offer shortcuts that can speed up the interaction for the expert users. Keyboard shortcuts available in many products, and they enable users to use frequent actions without clicking the menu. Aesthetic and minimalism. Follow the less is more approach in your design. Remove all unnecessary elements that do not have any positive impact on the user experience. Google Search is an excellent example on how to prioritize content over Chrome. The service removes all unnecessary visual design details and the page is centered around one particular idea, search. Help users recognize and recover from errors. Error messages should be expressed in a plain language, precisely indicate the problem and suggest a solution. When writing error messages, do not only state the fact that the users face a problem, offer a solution on how to solve it. Help and documentation. Offer helpful documentation inside your product. Documentation should be a natural part of your product and it should be refined regularly. Always think about specific situations that the user can face or questions that the user might ask while they interact with your product and cover them in the documentation. Now let's talk about things you shouldn't do when conducting heuristic evaluation. First, don't rely solely on the popular heuristics. When it comes to establishing design heuristics, there are no fixed recommendations, as each design presents its own set of different needs. The heuristic coined by Jacob Nielsen or Ben Schneiderman shouldn't, should be used to inform usability experts, but exact set of uh, heuristic should be selected according to the project needs. Second, Heuristic evaluation is not a, re a replacement for usability testing. Heuristic evaluation is different from usability testing because the people who do the evaluation, usability experts, inspect the interface instead of using it. As a result, you cannot use a re heuristic evaluation as a full replacement for the usability testing. To maximize effect from heuristic evaluation, you should conduct, conduct it together with usability testing. First, do heuristic evaluation and then usability testing. When you know the areas where you have usability flows, you can make usability testing more focused. Last but not least, do not postpone heuristic evaluation to the very end of design process. Heuristic evaluation can help you identify a substantial number of usability issues before you design reach implementation phase. The earlier you find the problem, the less expensive it will be to fix it. The perfect moment to conduct a heuristic analysis is right after a team creates the first functional prototype of a product and before the team starts to code it. Conducting a heuristic analysis during this step will help you to identify usability issues and the cost of fixing them will be less than for issues found after development is finished. A properly conducted heuristic evaluation will help you to identify a substantial number of usability issues even before your product starts to be used by users. But to achieve an optimal results, 
it's vital to use the heuristic evaluation together with other usability testing methods. If you like this video, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll never miss a new video. Thank you!